I, I initially started, my, my dad's a musician, he, he's an organist, um, church organist, and I started playing, I took, had kind of a disastrous start playing the piano when I was six, and then I played trumpet for a little while, but I, I found the guitar when I was in uh, maybe seventh grade, I was 12 or 13, and just started kind of fiddling around with it on my own. You wanted and to then, rock. I wanted to rock, and then it, uh, it took over my life pretty soon after. Like, like many guitar players, I have uh, gone through a few. I started off just uh, teaching myself rock guitar. I, I pretty much only play, uh, play Irish music. When I was little, I was exposed to a lot of different musicians and artists. My folks were just music enthusiasts, and uh, they loved folk music. We had a lot of different recordings of traditional Irish, as well as just general American folk music. And as we traveled throughout the United States and uh, lived in Nsuka, Nigeria, lived in Thailand, I was just exposed to a great number of wonderful folk musicians. And just, I kind of fell in love with the whole community of musicians as much as music itself. Well, I got a call for a wedding gig in Chicago, and uh, it was for flute and guitar. And I didn't really play with any guitar players at the time, and so I called up a friend and said, can you recommend someone? She gave me three guitar players. Matt was second on the list, but he was the first one home. This was like before the cell phone thing. Got a phone call from, from this girl looking for a guitar player for a wedding, and my first thought was, sweet, got a, got a gig. <laughs> and so he got the gig. We did this wedding gig. Actually, the wedding gig was canceled. <laughs> yeah, but by that by that point, we had, we had gotten together to rehearse for the wedding gig, and uh, you know, found out that we had a lot in common musically, and and the the social thing came a little later, but uh, not that much later, really. Um, so we started playing music together, then we started dating, then we put it all together. Talking a little bit about the music before we play the music helps contextualize it a bit for the audience because very often there is some uh, there are interesting stories or interesting to us anyway about the tunes or the songs and I think kinda letting the audience in on that secret makes it um, can make it a more enjoyable experience. Some of the, the big mansions it got me thinking there was one in particular that I would I would often pass as I was uh, riding, actually when I was riding my bike home from here late at night and I would see this, it's this huge mansion up on top of this very imposing rock face and I always kind of, you know, wondered about who lived there and what, what went on and, and so it kind of morphed into this song um, which is a, it's a little, just an innocent little love story about a, a, a poor boy and a rich girl with diamonds on the, and um, the, <laughs> and she, she lives up in this, this one particular house that I have in mind in, in Medford. Rather than just this uh, presentation of a bunch of, of, um, of music that you don't know anything about, I think it helps to kind of make it a little more personal of an experience. And talking about what's happening that particular night in the moment also makes it more here and now and real because every night is different. And it has a lovely refrain style part for you to join in on. A joiny any bit. And it goes like this. You want to sing the joiny any bit? I will. Okay. Um, if I can remember. The first snowfall of December. I don't want to see something that I know is, is exactly the same as the night before and it'll be exactly the same the night after. That's a movie. Like, that's, you know. A live show is a live show. And you might have this great idea for the sing-along, and it totally flops because nobody feels like singing along. The first snowfall of December. That's something that we're a little gentle about. We don't always have these big sing-along numbers and, and, you know, require the audience to belt it out. If the audience doesn't feel like it, you can kind of sense that. And if the audience seems like a big sing-along crowd for these Christmas shows, for example, that we're doing, makes sense to have more sing-alongs. The carol tradition is a strong one. Through all the wintry weather, through all the wintry weather. And that happens a lot, so if you didn't get it just then, you'll have, you'll have an extra chance. Oh, the day it grew dark and the street lamps came 
came on the first snowfall of December. July would be longest before breaks the dawn through all the wintry weather. Young Sally, she watched through the window pane the first snowfall of December. Wondering if she'd see that young man again Through all the wintry weather Her house was lit for a party grand The first snowfall of December A night of dancing impeccably planned Through all the wintry weather As the guests arrived, the music flowed First snowfall of December Still sunny she stared at the street down below Through all the wintry weather Sally spotted the boy she longed for to meet First snowfall of December At the door of her house up on Governor Street Through all the wintry weather Paul took in his breath and he knocked on the door, just as he'd so often dreamt of doing before. There stood Sally's father, so proper and stern. Paul felt his cheeks start to redden and burn. He looked at him up, and he looked at him down, this poor young laborer from the town. But he opened the door, and he smiled just as wide. Happy Christmas, young man, won't you come on inside? have to uh, answer answer questions like uh, you know are you, are you guys brother and sister um, but <laughs> it means that we we get to uh, we spend a lot of time together and we you know we have to work on we, we have I think we like to think we have you know pretty good communication skills with each other because we would drive each other batty if we didn't well, it's interesting being married and playing music together because it means you spend a lot of time together. So you really have to be, um, you have to learn to carve out space and interests, each of your own, so you nurture your own personal and musical development. And also it means that when you share triumphs and frustrations, you do it together. And so when I come home from a gig and I'm frustrated because I didn't perform the way I wanted to or whatever, I can tell Matt about it. I can really tell him how I feel, and he knows how I feel. And um, that's very comforting many times. music it's fairly easy to see because a lot of the, the music really uh, lives in sessions a lot which is where musicians just I mean typically it, it happens in a pub but it can be a house it can be anywhere it's just where a bunch of musicians get together and play we're gonna um, just show you a little bit of our working process with this song called where the moorcocks crow. Yeah, one of the big big things with this song is it's usually sung very very freely and out of time and there you know there are there are a few recordings of it but they're all either unaccompanied or the accompaniment is like a, you know, drone or something. So it's very the rhythm is very very loose. Let's just start with a regular groove and maybe Matt you would double me on the melody a little bit for starters. So Blooming heather to seek 
Bogle Valentine died to my way. Love it. Maybe a little bit more of a like a more of a banjo kind of a banjo. Like like who banjo? Like Hall Hammery banjo. And when night comes, we'll give him one. 